The UK's Royal Navy is studying the introduction of aircraft launch and recovery systems on its two Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers to open up the flight deck to a broader range of both manned and unmanned systems. As reported by Naval News, during the Farnborough Air Show a few days ago, Colonel Phil Kelly, head of Carrier Strike and Maritime Aviation within the Royal Navy's Development Directorate, outlined a plan to retrofit arresting gear and what they call assisted launch equipment as part of the future Maritime Aviation Force vision. FMAF is a program to explore integrating unmanned aircraft across the Royal Navy with a focus on future carrier aviation. The Blinkist app enables you to understand the most important things from over 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. With the help of Blinkist, you can discover new perspectives, broaden your horizons, have exciting conversations, and experience aha moments. Here's a great example, Leadership Strategy and Tactics by Jocko Willink, a 20-year U.S. Navy SEAL and now YouTuber who co-founded Echelon Front, a leadership and management consulting company. This particular blink of Jocko's book is perfect for CEOs, managers, or people looking to be promoted to supervisory positions. You'll learn how to take the skills of a high-functioning Navy SEAL and apply those lessons to your workplace. Blinkist is also introducing spaces, a feature that allows you to create a space with friends and family where you can add, share, and recommend titles from the Blinkist app. A space can be for a group of people or a topic like productivity or mindfulness. All members of a shared space can access all titles in that space with or without a premium subscription. Get 25% off Blinkist annual premium and start your seven-day free trial by clicking on my exclusive link in the episode description below. HMS Queen Elizabeth finished her inaugural six-month deployment about a year and a half ago, and that cruise which took the carrier to the Western Pacific, Indian Ocean, and Mediterranean Sea, also included VMFA-211, the Wake Island Avengers, a U.S. Marine Corps F-35B squadron as part of the strike group. Currently, the QEC-class flight deck configuration has a 12.5 degree ski ramp for launches and a vertical recovery deck for landings, basically what's required to support F-35B Lightning II flight ops. No assisted launch or arrestment machinery is installed. Now what they're calling Project Arc Royal is exploring options for adding aircraft launch and recovery equipment to QEC that would allow flight ops using high-performance unmanned and potentially conventional fixed-winged manned aircraft. At Farnborough, Colonel Kelly said, we are looking to move from Stovall, which is short takeoff vertical landing, to Stoll, which is short takeoff and landing, then to Stobar, which is short takeoff but arrested recovery, then to Catabar, which is catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery. The main driver behind Project Arc Royal is another program called Vixen, a medium-sized fixed-wing loyal wingman UAV designed to work with the F-35. The weight of Vixen will require cats and traps for carrier ops. The first step of Project Arc Royal is to incorporate a recovery system into the QEC design that could handle Vixen, which is the carrier-based version of the RAF's Mosquito, a large fixed-wing UAV. The second step would be to add catapults that would, as Colonel Kelly put it, allow us to operate the heaviest aircraft you can imagine. Okay, I can imagine a 72,000 pound Tomcat, which was the max launch weight of the F-14 on a Nimitz-class carrier. I guarantee you that's more than what Colonel Kelly's thinking about. To that point, here are the Ministry of Defense's requirements for the Ark Royal system. What they call potential arrestor solutions ideally should offer a max trap of 47,000 pounds, which is in the range of the F-35, and a minimum trap weight of 11,000 pounds, which is sort of the UAV type weights. Potential catapult solutions should offer a max launch weight of 55,000 pounds, again, fully loaded F-35 type weights, and low launch cycle times for max sortie generation, which means it shouldn't take very long for the launch system to get back up to speed after a cat shot. Exactly where the aircraft launch and recovery equipment to fit the carriers may come from is unclear at this point. However, Naval News reports that the Project Arc Royal team has already reviewed several assisted launch and recovery systems, including General Atomic's Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System and Advanced Arresting Gear, AAG, used on the U.S. Navy's Ford-class aircraft carriers, and the U.K.'s own Electromagnetic Kinetic Induction Technology Demonstrator, which is being developed by GE Power Conversion. Big question number one is, is there power available for a launch system like EMAILS? The short answer is yes. The QEC carriers were designed with reserves of electrical gathering capacity, which is probably adequate for, let's call it, emails light, but there would be very significant work involved in the integration. Big question number two, and this was an issue with the development of the initial Ford-class aircraft carrier, 
is, is there real estate available for adding these systems to QEC class carriers? Again, the short answer is yes. There's a gallery deck below the flight deck with space available to potentially put catapults and arresting gear equipment. But as with emails, it will still involve significant surgery. Here are the four flight deck configuration options on the table right now. Option one, catapult parallel to the ski ramp. The pros are it requires minimal flight deck configuration work and minimizes interference with V-stall flying and allows almost simultaneous launches. The con is cramped space between the forward island and the ramp may restrict aircraft movements depending on VIX and wingspan. Option two, the catapult replaces the ski ramp. The pros are it only requires ramp removal and provides plenty of space for launch and retains plenty of space to park aircraft on the deck. Cons are the F-35B loses safety and load benefits of a ramp launch and only one aircraft can be launched at a time. Option three is put the catapult before the ski ramp. Prozar requires the least flight deck reconfiguration work and retains plenty of space to park aircraft on the deck. Cons are only one aircraft can be launched at a time. Unmanned aircraft may need to be strengthened to withstand forces generated by cat and ramp launch. And option four is an angled deck. The pros are it's the safest recovery because it allows bolters, which is the term for when an aircraft misses the wires with its tail hook and takes off again. Cons are it requires substantial reconfiguration of the flight deck and new steelwork. The ramp is retained, but the layout will conflict with V-stall flying. The FMAF plan is still what they call pre-decisional, and at this point the goal is to explore capabilities, experiment, and gather evidence in a way that will inform the MOD's next integrated review in 2025. All of this is somewhat ironic and frustrating to many British naval observers in that this capability was part of the original plan in 2010 and then removed from the plan in 2012. The costs and delays associated with adding cats and traps to HMS Queen Elizabeth during her initial construction precipitated a return to a more realistic, if less capable, V-stall solution. And should this project succeed, it would yield a much more formidable air group. QEC class supporters characterize this option as further vindication of the selection of a large and adaptable aircraft carrier design. But there's also an argument that funds might be better spent on a lower risk option of buying more F-35Bs and a few V-22 Ospreys. But that argument is being countered by influencers and planners who feel strongly that much, if not all, of the future of military aviation will involve autonomous vehicles. So pulling back up to 30,000 feet here, these are the major technical and funding hurdles in front of the UK's Ministry of Defense between now and 2030, the point at which they want to have an operational unmanned aircraft system flying in support of the F-35Bs. Number one, design and build a carrier-capable, low-observable, fixed-wing unmanned aerial system, acronym FWUAS, from scratch in the UK for a unit cost of 10 million pounds. Number two, Integrate the FWUAS with the F-35B. Number three, integrate weapons and sensors onto the FWUAS. Number four, develop safe carrier operating procedures for FWUAS and certify weapons carriage and delivery. Number five, develop the concept of operations and work up to initial operational capability. Number six, continue development, including flying FWUAS in large numbers, what they call swarms. Number seven, consider FWUAS air-to-air -air refueling options to support the F-35. That by itself has the potential to be a major technical challenge, which in turn leads to cost overruns. Number eight, find and procure appropriate and reliable electromagnetic launch and arresting gear systems. For more on that, see the history of the Ford-class carrier development, although they can certainly leverage some of those learnings as they try to incorporate emails on the Queen Elizabeth class. Number nine, redesign the QEC carrier flight deck to support both FW UAS and cattle bar operations while retaining V-stall and rotary wing flying capabilities. If they did this successfully, it would make the Queen Elizabeth class the first such hybrid carriers in the world. Number 10, conduct major refit of HMS Queen Elizabeth, open up parts of the flight deck and install that cattle bar equipment. Number 11, integrate cattle bar equipment with ship systems. Number 12, conduct sea trials and developmental flying with these new systems. And finally, number 13, integrate logistics support and flight control systems for FWUAS onto the ship. 13 steps and a goal of seven years to complete them. That's ambitious to say the least. So we'll be keeping our eye on the situation and providing updates when the conditions warrant. So if you're not already a subscriber, become one so you don't miss anything. And if you'd like to help support the channel, please consider using the super thanks, the heart icon below, or become a patron. 
at patreon.com slash wardcarroll. In the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.